Hello everybody and welcome back to LMM. And if you're enjoying what you see on the channel at the moment, then the links to our social media are coming up on the screen now. Welcome back to the Apedale Railway to their Smoke Without a Fire event that you might have seen a little video saying that I was going to be here a couple of weeks ago. So I've been invited down to this event of many, many things working. Bear in mind they've got like a hundred locomotives here, just under. And they're gonna have lots of them out and about, stuff like what's behind us here, all running about, running passenger trains. I think each day features 14 different internal combustion locomotives out and about pulling passenger trains, plus the field railway. And of course, they've asked me to come along to be part of the railway to help drive, help out, and just be around. So I'm looking forward to it. There's a whole host of locomotives, they've said. Feel free and take them out. So enjoy this video. See us helping out, being part of it, driving around, and uh, a absolute, well, veritable feast of locomotives. And the only thing that's uh, not looking too good is the weather. The forecast says it's going to be very wet. It's going to be very wet. And uh, yeah. So on with the show. Ooh. gonna be a good one. I was eager to get involved and help out. The first stage before the doors opened to the public was to help prep the locos and get the engines rostered for the day's service out of the multiple sheds and into the correct order to undertake their turns. So we're going to see just how many different locomotives I can drive during my visit. And that will be the counter down here. The counter over here is how many engines we actually feature in the videos. So that includes the ones we've already seen in the previous shots. And then up top, that's what day it was. So it turns out there's actually quite a lot to get done to get everything ready for a gala. And of course, many of the locomotives, including this visiting motor rail, have to be hand started. The first job was getting the locomotives that were going to start the day lined up and ready to go. And then more locomotives turned up. And then more locomotives turned up.
I was then given a little Ruston, something that I was very happy about, and sent off to go and collect the demonstration freight set, leaving everybody else to set about checking and starting the locomotives that we'd marshalled into position. And of course, being vintage machinery, some of it is more challenging to start than others. Evidently, my return was all that was needed for the motor rail to cough back into life. And with that, the first groups of locomotives headed up to the station, ready for the first passenger trains. And with them out of the way, the yard was now clear to make space for the second demonstration it's good set. My first task was to help with the guided tours of the shed, showing the extensive collection of locomotives in the trust's ownership. Now, you'll notice that the counter hasn't leapt up. We're only counting engines that we actually witness working. And with that, the doors were open to the public for the first trains to start on.
started to rain. But don't worry, they've told me it's not going to be much and it's going to blow over and it's going to be fine. It turns out they lied. Locomotives were changed on pretty much every train, giving visitors an almost unparalleled chance to experience different motive power, so it wasn't long before it was time for their next group of locomotives to be needed. also getting rather wet. Saturday also gave the first opportunity ever to ride on the entire production run of Robert Hudson locomotives on one train. Merlin, the abomination on front, was built to be the same as its sister Showmont, but was modified for use on a pleasure railway. And yes, this is their absolute maximum speed. was then asked to undertake what everybody loves to see me fail at, hand starting. And then the world's fastest service train passed on its return trip. Almost unbelievably, it was slower going uphill. It was now becoming mighty unpleasant in the wet, and I was very grateful for a brief respite by getting to something that had a cab.
shame about the weather because this would have been a really, really amazing event if the weather was good. As the weather continued to worsen, the day drew to an end. So all that remained now was to put everything away. I was, by this point, exceedingly wet, drenched through to the skin. Never heard from again.
and so ended day one and we scurried back off to the hotel to try and drain the water from the camera and find somewhere to dry our sodden clothes and to hope for a better day tomorrow. So far, 21 different locomotives had graced our cameras and I'd managed to drive nine of them. Still clad in slightly damp overalls, Sunday started with us undoing what we'd done the evening before by moving locomotives about to recover one of the rustins from the container, with the weather being notably pleasant. And in true element fashion, the rustin decided it wouldn't start for us, so a push was required to clear the line. And then it was time to prep everything again. And that included the passenger stop. Everybody was busy getting the locomotives lined up, ready to run the first service train. And with everything prepped, the first locomotives headed up to the station to wait the train. which departed soon after. With the passenger train departed, the remainder of the first roster followed up the line towards the station. With the yard clear, cable mill number two could bring the demonstration goods, as well as the reluctant Ruston, down the line. was soon running and hauled the first public train of day two down the line.
in a rare moment of sunshine, we nipped outside to see these two out on display. The yellow Ruston is Mosley, and that's the first locomotive that the Trust here actually had. Although it's not owned by them anymore, and it's on a totally different gauge, this is 20 inch gauge, so it doesn't actually run on two foot. And here we have the newest acquisition, which is the last known BR Ruston. This thing worked for the LNER. And of course, this is also three foot gauge. But they're not going to regauge it. And when the new shed's built, the plan is to build a three foot gauge railway for this to trundle around on. Because this is quite the find, recently found and came here, well, basically the other day. But yeah, a diesel used by the LNER and used by BR. Still here, going to be restored, going to run. Pretty awesome. The sun decided that it would stay out and everything looked a lot nicer in the sunlight. So we ventured down to the other end of the line. After waiting in the wings and watching the other services go by for what felt like forever, finally it was my turn to take a train out onto the field railway. I really enjoyed the simplicity of cable mill number two and it felt authentic as we bounced across the field railway. Ahead of us, the Alan Keith rumbled into the yard with the short set.
with the sun staying out, it made it a far more pleasant experience for the drivers of the cabless locomotives. I was really happy once again to be on a Ruston as I prepared to go and collect the skips. I was then offered the controls of another motor rail, and unsurprisingly, I didn't say no. Thank you. 
I then went and picked up this strange thing. another motor rail became available and I felt obliged to take another one out just to see how different it was compared to the others. Another collection of locos was now preparing to make their way up to the station to take their turns on the passenger services. And one of the things that I was most excited to see was this, one of the flagships of the Mosley Railways Trust fleet.
double trouble. Two motor rails working together, which makes this my first double header of the year. I'm genuinely loving this. I'm also getting, this is a long day. I have driven more things than I can count now. And what's really nice is, I've been on the footplate now for almost 15 years. And it's really nice that so many engines like the motor rail here that I recognize and I can hop straight on and drive away. There's other things which I haven't been on before, but with a couple of seconds orientation, very happy to hop on and drive away. And it's been a really nice experience for me personally to be like, I do know what I'm talking about. This is nice and you can hop on different things and go, oh, I know what this is, I figured this out, and be able to drive different engines and be feeling confident with what you're doing. This is a proper laugh. And if you haven't been to the Eggdale Railway before, highly recommend coming down for one of these galas because there's so much going on, it's fantastic. Now, it's easy to say, but I'm having a lot of fun. I'm also driving some of the places that you're not necessarily meant to be driving. For instance, currently, I'm on Lady Anne in Bryan. <laughs> Up Bryan we go. Soon it was time for yet another change of locomotives to take place. And then I was back again on a motor rail, though this time I was going to be heavily loaded with the peat wagons.
good people at the Adel Railway decided that they were going to give me a treat. Instead of going on shed, we were going for a ride in this. This is one of the things I've been most excited to get onto. It's a rebuilt tin turtle. It's one of the pride of the fleet at the Ape Dale Railway. Now, originally it would have had the arm around it, and this is how it was rebuilt when it was in industrial service after the war. And they lovingly refer it to as the block of flats because uh, it looks strange. That's a weird, weird thing. I like it though. And this remains one of the strangest locomotives that I've ever been privileged enough to be allowed to drive. Sadly though, by the time we got back, the day was starting to wind down and locos were returning to their sheds. And locomotives being returned to their sheds, of course, mean more things need to be driven.
That is the single worst thing I've ever driven because the handbrake has about that much spare space between it and the side of the cab. So you put the brake on, you're like, ah, my hand, ah, my hand, ah, and you run downhill. So all that happens is you hurt your hand. And here we are at the end of the day with everything parked back up in the various sheds around here. And I don't know if you can tell this, but I have had a thoroughly, thoroughly good time. And so a absolutely massive thank you to the Apedale Light Railway and the Mosley Railway Trust for inviting me along to be part of this gala. It's been really, really good. It's been fantastic seeing so many different variants and types of locomotives going past. I mean, I don't think there's really anywhere else in the UK apart from maybe the Statfold Barn, where you can get the variation that we've seen today. And frankly, it's been fantastic just trundling around on the field railway, driving, I don't know how many. There's, there'll be the counter town here, keeping count of how many things I've driven, because at this stage, I have absolutely no idea, apart from it's been quite a few. And the weather has been, it's been okay over the weekend. It's, points have been less good, and at the end of play yesterday, I was damp. All in all, it couldn't dampen our spirits and it's been really, really good fun. They really are a lovely bunch of people here. If you like what you've seen here and you feel like you'd like to come and visit in the future, then there's a link in the video description to the website which will tell you future events, things they've got coming up, and so it's worth checking out. And of course, if you really like what you've seen, you like the locomotives and you feel like I'd like to be part of this, there's lots of exciting plans going on at the railway. They've got an extension, hopefully in the works, new buildings, new plans for lots of things. So it's a good time to be involved. Have a look on the website there is also the links there to sign up as a volunteer highly recommend it because they are a lovely bunch of people and of course to all of you guys who have come along today and for those of you who've come and said hi thanks for coming and saying hi it's a pleasure to meet you all and if you you see me here and you didn't say hi why not next time you see us say hi we love meeting you guys it's part of what makes this fun so thank you very much for watching guys really appreciate it i've had a lovely time the railway i think have not hated having us but uh nah, they've been lovely they've been really really good Thanks for watching guys and if you've enjoyed this one how about clicking over there somewhere for the, the last episode of chasing dinosaurs or down there for the first one when we went to the Chernit valley railway and saw usa s160s with that it's getting dark and i've got a three and a half hour journey to go home so thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time it's that way <laughs>